I just, I feel like I'm gonna regret this. Whatever. Hey everybody, thank you so much for clicking on this video. So today I am reviewing Natasha Oshien. I think that's how you say her last name. More specifically, I chose three of her most popular workout videos and I'm gonna be using them to give her a final score to fit in with the rest of my fitness reviews. Now I will say my complete intention was to purchase one of her programs from her website and take like eight to 10 weeks to go through one of those. If I have to be honest, I don't have the time for that. So guys, if you missed it in my last video, I did announce that I just launched my own on-demand workout membership program. So throughout the month, I'm filming for that. So I just don't think that A, scientifically, it would be super accurate, like the results that I got from one of the programs since I wouldn't just be doing that. And I just don't have the time. So maybe in the future, that's something that I can do. But I will say, I think that I can get a pretty good idea of what she brings to the table and what she offers just by doing some of her free YouTube workouts. Now, as always, I will be judging Natasha's workouts on three different factors, the price, the vibe, and how functional the workouts are. So let's do it. Like I said, Natasha offers training guides on her website and the average cost seems to be about $50, but it does vary based on the guide that you choose. I ended up opting for her YouTube workouts, which are completely free. Now, if you're someone who prefers to save stuff on Instagram, she also has a plethora of workouts that you can swipe through on her Instagram feed too. I really love Natasha's videos because they're bright, they're crisp, they're clear. Now, I will say I do prefer having someone talk to me while I'm working out, like not just a follow along, no talking. I like the follow along as they're coaching me. Again, that's just my personal opinion and something that I prefer, but that was definitely like a downside of Natasha's workouts. Now, the only other thing I wanna bring up is about how to find her workouts because it wasn't actually as easy as I thought. So I went to her YouTube page and I clicked on like work out with me or whatever the playlist is called. And I just assumed that everything on there was gonna be a follow along workout. And it definitely wasn't because the first one that I chose actually wasn't a follow along workout. It was just her like talking about this workout that you could do. So I still did it, you're gonna see that, but it definitely was not like what it should have been. So just keep that in mind as you're looking for her free workouts, like do a little bit more research than I did. But aside from that, Natasha's vibe is really great. Her stuff is well informed, it's backed in science, so I'm just, I'm a big fan. So if this is your first time watching one of my fitness reviews, I'm gonna be judging Natasha's workouts on these functional aspects of functional training. So we're actually gonna go through all three of the workouts. I'm just gonna speed them up and I'm gonna kinda like talk as I'm doing stuff and you're gonna see what Natasha's doing too. But just so we know, I have my notes right down here. So like if I am looking down, that's why. Let's do it. The first workout that I did was the ultimate dumbbell workout. So this first exercise works in the sagittal plane. So that's your plane that either moves front back or up down. And we're getting a squat in there right off the bat. I say it all the time, but I'm always looking in my workouts for a squat lunge and a deadlift or hip hinge action. The reason for that is because these are the most common movement patterns in daily life. We just wanna make sure that we're training all of these to make sure that we don't get injured. Next up, we're jumping into a front squat. So that is a different angle and actually we're using a different tempo in the programming. Because the weight is loaded at the front of your body, it is gonna recruit a lot more core than when we were doing that thruster, which is on the shoulders. And compared to the thruster, this is more of like a moderate controlled tempo than that explosive on the way up. And then Natasha ended up throwing in an advanced alternative, which includes a lunge. I loved this. Anytime that we can string two movement patterns together, the better, because again, that's how we move in everyday life. I also love a reverse lunge because we're gonna add in a little bit of that stability factor. Coming up next is the creme de la creme, a deadlift. So more specifically, we did a single leg deadlift and this hip hinge motion in general, whether it's a deadlift, a good morning, is something that I always find people are neglecting in their training. And again, it's super important because this is where a lot of people injure their low back because they don't actually know how to shift their hips backwards. And then again, since it is single side, you do have a little bit more of that stability work. Right after that deadlift, we saw another hip hinge with a kettlebell swing. Well, technically she did a dumbbell swing, but I had a kettlebell, so I threw it in there. Um, I'm working on my form, so like, please don't, 
judge me. I, I, I just, I don't know why I have such a hard time with these. So I just decided to work on my kettlebell swing instead of try the dumbbell swing. But this is another great like power tempo because it's really explosive on the way up. Then we got into Renegade Rows, which are a staple of all of my workouts and all of my clients' workouts. And I don't understand, but like, why do they never get easier? Someone give me that science because I don't understand. I love a row because it's a pulling exercise and I do find that a lot of people not only like front load pushing exercises in their workouts, but also we spend so much time sitting during the day, accentuating or activating the push muscles on our body. And we just don't do enough with the pull muscles, which give us that proper posture. And then Natasha ended up giving this like advanced option where we rode and then we twisted. So we got into that transverse plane. So that's our final plane of motion. So we did see all three in this workout. And then we jumped into yet another exercise in the transverse plane, our Russian twists with like, a bicycle leg and it was weighted and the feet were elevated. I usually would not be a fan of this. I didn't, I didn't hate it. I do just find that most people like number one, don't do Russian twists, right? They're putting way too much pressure on the low back and their posture is terrible. Number two, with the weight, I just feel that like people can't control it. I didn't mind this. I just like, I, I probably wouldn't like choose it for myself. And then you can see me here giving her snaps because she literally said anti-rotation core exercise. And that is my jam. I've talked about that so many times on my channel and it's a huge function or like staple of my training with my clients. We can work the core in rotation, extension, flexion, lateral flexion, but we can also do anti of all of those things. Just thinking about the function of the core, which is to stabilize your spine. I do find that working anti-rotation is a little bit more functional than, or like anti-movement is a little more functional than working like the actual movement all the time. And I find that most people work the movement all the time and not the resisting of movement. So adding more of this in is always great in my opinion. Then the next workout I did was the 15 minute fat burning HIT workout. Now this workout started checking a few big factors right off the bat. We got in a squat and it moved in the sagittal and the transverse plane. This one definitely requires some mind body connection, but once I got my footwork down, I actually really liked this exercise. Now, not that we're like exactly doing this exercise or this movement in everyday life, but I do think this is a really functional thing to add in because a lot of times when we get up from sitting down, we're not just getting up and then standing and waiting for everything to be aligned. A lot of times we're getting up and moving at the same time. So this kind of does mimic that, even if it's not like a cute little twist dance move. <laughs> moving into these toe taps, these were a great unilateral and stability exercise since you're using one leg and arm at a time. And this is a good example of a compound movement. So the glutes are stabilizing you, the triceps are on freaking fire, and then your back is working to keep your shoulders retracted and your chest nice and open. Next up was a jump jack, jump jack into a narrow jump. This one, I just felt like it was like, eh, there's something else we could have picked here. You know, I'm already someone who is like, why are we doing jumping jacks here? And I do think that there's like a time and a place and a person who should be doing jumping jacks or these types of exercises. I just don't think that if you only have five exercises in your workout, this should be one of them. But I will say that you see two planes of motion here. So you see the sagittal up down and then you see the frontal with the legs going out and in. Then we jump down onto the floor for a down dog with an alternating knee drive. I love that we got another unilateral exercise in here. And this is also a great example of a compound movement. So it recruits as many muscles and as many joints at the same time to get the most bang for your buck. And then we ended with this monster compound <laughs> movement. Um, we got a unilateral exercise that requires a ton of stability, you know, and it's also something that required us to use the legs to get up off the floor, which is super functional. And we were also exploding up. So we saw this great explosive tempo and then trying to like stabilize on one leg. I mean, this was, this was a tough one. And this is something that you'll see a lot of times in my classes, like not this exact exercise, but things where you do have to get yourself up off the floor because thinking about down the road, like 20, 30, 40 years from now, you wanna be able to get yourself up off of the floor. We tend to get so stuck in like training for now and our aesthetics right now and being thin right now. But if we can think a little bit more long-term about can we get up from a seat in 20 years? Can we pick ourselves up off the floor in 20 years? Can we prevent a fall by working our stabilizers in 20 years? 
working them now, not in 20 years. I mean, these are the things that I'm trying to implement into a lot of my workouts and my clients' workouts. And then finally, we're getting into our 10 minute ab workout. Okay, so this workout obviously isn't gonna fit like all of the checkpoints for functional training. So let's just kind of talk about it instead. I do have to say, I was pleasantly surprised that this was not all just crunching motion because my experience with other like fitness model -y influencers is that that's what they are. So the fact that we actually spent a pretty equal amount of time like in prone position, so like plank, and then on our back or supinated was very refreshing. So this just kind of shows that like Natasha knows her stuff and that what she's doing is truly backed in science and research. Just kind of like bringing in some of the checkpoints. We hit a ton of planes of motion. We hit lots of angles, lots of different tempos. The only thing I hated was the crunch at the end. I talked about it so much. I just, I don't think that a crunch is like the best use of your time, especially if you're only doing 10 minutes. Like there were other abdominal exercises we could have put in there, like a hollow hold I would have preferred. Again, and resisting movement. I just find that most people do crunches wrong and they're putting a lot of flexion or like too, just too much pressure on the low back. I don't know, it's just my opinion. So we have made it to the final score. So I am giving Natasha Oshien a 9.0. So that's pretty high in the grand scheme of things. She's like number four up on my list now. Let's talk about where she lost some points. Honestly, Natasha didn't lose points in her programming. If I were just looking at the programming and nothing else, she would like, she would basically be up there with Charlie Atkins. Never gonna beat Charlie Atkins because no one ever will, but she would be right up there. But unfortunately, we're putting in other factors. And number one, I love being coached through a workout. I'm not a huge fan of just like the no talking. So she lost some points for me right there. Again, these are just my opinions and my preferences. And then, it is just hard for me to put her above Fitness Blender, who has literally thousands and thousands of free workouts that you can do. And then Sydney Cummings is literally giving you a follow along workout that is scientifically programmed for, like toward progressive overload every single day. So I can't put her above Sydney. So let me know in the comments if you've ever done one of Natasha's workouts, if you've ever gone through one of her programs, I would love to know what that experience was like. And I will be reviewing a few more people for the rest of the month coming out hopefully every Tuesday, that's the goal. So just keep an eye out for those and otherwise hit that subscribe button so you don't miss and I'll see you in the next one.